Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to another edition of um, South Wales Coast Watch. And I'm here today with uh, Dr. Martin Shrewsbury and uh, author of UFO Wales, uh, Lee Richards. Okay? And I'm just, I've got a few questions to ask Lee, first of all. Thank you. And the first question I'm going to ask you, uh, Lee, is uh, what got you into uh, UFOs? Well, I think when I was young, um, it was the, I was born in the mid-1960s, so it was the um, beginning of the space age. You know, people were landing on the moon for the first time. Um, culture was very excitement based, you know, in terms of television programs. There was a bit of Star Trek and um, programs like that, Doctor Who. So, um, as, a, as a child, I was aware of the possibility, uh, I suppose, of, of life outside the Earth. Um, and um, so, I, I suppose I had an interest in, in the topic, but when I was. Um, 10 or 11 years old, I think there were a series of events in West Wales which later became uh, very famous as the Welsh Triangle. Um, effectively, um, for a period in the 1970s, a lot of people don't know this, but Wales, you know, was the UFO capital of the world. And um, there, were, there were some amazing events going on there, which I write about in, in my book, and um, which um, a hundred, hundreds of um, sightings of UFOs, encounters with human human beings, other uh, amazing phenomena. And these were being reported, you know, in the, in the media at the time. Um, that was the first time, really, certainly in Wales, that um, things like this had been widely reported. And I suppose from then on, I was 10 or 11, um, I really, say, developed an interest um, in the subject. I then read an excellent book uh, called Welsh Triangle. Uh, which recounts the events in West Wales, and um, and when, when we say West Wales, I mean we're talking about also almost as far as Swansea in terms of things that were going on, unexplained things that were going on at the time. And I suppose uh, it was that, and you know there were program, I mean, this excellent program called Arthur C. Clarke's Mysterious World, which a lot of people might remember. Um, and from that time, I suppose I always had an interest. You know, uh, it was a hobby. Um, I can follow football. Or, um, you know, yeah. like certain yeah. bands, um, and I suppose it was really, yeah, it was the, it was, it was the events in, in West Wales in the late 1970s that, that really triggered my interest in the topic. Okay. Have you had any uh, UFO experiences yourself, um, as, from, as a child or from a young age? Um, I personally haven't, no. I mean, I know many people that have, yeah. Uh, yeah. family members, when, funny enough, I, uh, when I was, um, uh, I think, 11 or 12, um, some close family members, reported seeing um, UFOs uh, in Swansea and um, I, I've met, you know, over the years I've met many other people you know, who've um, reported seeing unexplained things in the sky and since I've written the book um, people, you know, people have, some people have spoken to me about their experiences um, I haven't, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect my belief you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in that there's something there in the reality of the subject Yes, know. yes Yes, because I think Lee's um, point about the 60s and the 70s as the beginning of this is very significant. We'd largely lost over the last sort of 50, 60 years an interest in folklore. Mm -hmm. And I think the technological ideas of the 60s and the 70s uh, could have led us to a very material view of the world. But it shows that there's something in humanity that's looking for a greater understanding. Absolutely. And if you look at Star Trek in its first yeah. few series, yeah. money has been abolished, yeah, um, society is better, war has been got rid of, and it was a way almost of expressing a hope for the future. Yeah. Close encounters. Close encounters. Is, you, know, is, is, yes. you know, these angelic yeah. alien beings who, you know, who, um, you know, come to Earth, uh, have got vastly superior technology, but clearly aren't warlike in the way humanity is. That's always been part of it, you know. Yes. Um, you know, I think it, there's a people inter interested in this topic. Um, one reason is is the belief that um, perhaps, in a way, um, alien civilizations <coughs> um, are superior to us in the sense, you know, they are. They, they, they are. I mean, mankind, you know, is very warlike, destructive in many ways. And um, there's a belief among some, you know, that these beings are almost. If, in fact, some of the encounters and sightings uh, with extraterrestrial beings have been along those lines. They've almost been like angels. Um, some people, you know, believe that they are, or believe that angels were, were extraterrestrials, but that was the, the, the way that people um, could only explain um, mm. 
you know, they went to the conception of extraterrestrial beings or life on other planets. So they, 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 they you know, they thought they were angels. Um, but um, whether that's the case or not, whether you know extraterrestrial beings are necessarily angelic is, is open to debate. Yes. I also remember when I was about eight or nine, I was a precocious brat, and I'd read Eric or done a concerto to the gods. Yeah. My grandmother had the vicar round for tea, and I told him that God was an asteroid. <laughs> Always was very seditious, and but uh, there's that hope, isn't there? I mean, uh, there's a well-known example in the Bible, Ezekiel, and the yes, chariots. No, um, NASA conducted uh, an analysis of that of that you know report uh, and, and concluded it was um, he encountered an extraterrestrial craft. Not many people actually know this because the NASA specialist concerned set out to disprove it, to debunk it. And they concluded, the NASA specialist, uh, I think this is in my book, uh, concluded it was, it was a genuine encounter with an extraterrestrial. Mm, which is, I didn't know that. Which is, well, it is very interesting. And, and the thing, again, a lot of people don't appreciate about this topic is um, that people have been ex sight uh, seeing UFOs um, for thousands of years. I mean, there are rock, rock paintings and drawings by Neanderthals uh, that seem to depict flying discs. There are many examples of this. Ancient Sumerian mm. culture uh, made, made report, you know, spoke of dawn beings who came down from the sky, the Incas. Um, so this is a, a phenomenon that's been with us for a long, long time. Yeah, it's fascinating. Absolutely. It's, 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 yeah. uh, you know, it's that idea that somehow there is a there is a better world possible. And that's the belief. Yeah, I mean, see, that's um, what people, yeah, because, you know, yeah, um, that's part of the... And Science fiction writers have always been at the heart, a lot of science fiction, critics, criti critiques society in the way it's organised. And, um, you know, science fiction, interest in this sort of thing, are all part of it. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So, so what is a UFO uh, in short? How would you summarise a UFO? Well, that's the thing. A UFO is, I mean, all a UFO actually is, is an unidentified flying object. I mean, it isn't necessarily a craft from another civilization. Not it necessarily, could, really, yeah, no, no, it could be a bird. Yeah. Uh, in most cases, they are. I mean, most UFO sightings, the figures vary 90, 95% are explainable in conventional terms. Uh, or lightning, birds, the planet Venus, um, terrestrial craft, um, which are mis mistakenly identified as UFOs, uh, stealth. Bomb, you know, I mean, new technology, yeah, yeah. Um, drones, um, you know, there are a range of natural explanations um, for UFOs, but one possible, you know, one potent possibility is um, looking at descriptions of, 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 of the craft, uh, looking at photographic evidence, radar evidence, that they are um, intelligently controlled craft. Um, so, you know, UFO, it's a, it's a broad term. Uh, and it was actually invented by a guy called uh, Colonel Edward Ruppelt, who was um, in charge of Project uh, Blue Book, which was set up by the American um, Air Force um, in the late 1940s to study this phenomena. Because um, after it had been going on for a long time, but after the Second World War, um, you were forced, when they began to be seen everywhere, or people just began to report them more frequently. So the US intelligence services thought we've got to look at this because they thought maybe the Russians are behind this, you know. Yeah. Um, what they don't know is at the same time the Russians thought the Americans were behind it because this <laughs> thing was happening all over the world. Right, yeah. In fact, uh, in the Second World War, the Nazis, it, it, it was thought that these were Nazi craft and the Nazis also thought they were, um, you know, American or, or British or Russian craft. Um, so um, it was a guy that this general called... Um, Edward Ruppelt, Colonel Edward Ruppelt, who um, he was given the job, one, of, of, of looking at UFO reports, and he coined the term uh, UFO because he didn't think the existing description of flying saucers, what they were called, was adequate. Um, but he looked at thousands of cases, and uh, he, he changed from being a sceptic to a believer, um, which, which is interesting. So, uh, yeah, UFO can, you know, just means unidentified flying object. That's, that's what it actually means. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so what inspired you to write your book, uh, UFO Whales? Uh, and you're at the book here, so if you haven't seen it. Yeah, I've got a call. Yeah. Uh, UFO Whales, what's it all about? Well, it, it's about, it is about UFO Whales, obviously. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No surprise. I mean, the, inter the thing, obviously, I, I was interested in the topic. Um, Wales is a country which has seen quite a lot of UFO related activity, um, sightings, uh, encounters. 
uh, allegedly, um, two UFOs have crashed in Wales, and perhaps we can talk about that in a bit. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I talk about those in my book. Um, but whereas there had been a couple of books written about the subject in Wales, um, The Welsh Triangle, I just mentioned. Yes. Um, and another book called The Dubbed Enigma. But they were both written in the 1970s, and they both looked at um, the uh, spate of UFO activity and sightings that took place in West Wales in the 1970s. There'd never been a book which looked at the topic. Um, from a historical standpoint, uh, for Wales as a whole, um, you know, I mean, Ireland, Scotland, many countries in the world, uh, there have been books written by, um, by ufologists in, in those kind of countries about the history of UFO sightings in those countries. But Wales, there hadn't been one. So, you know, I was interested in the topic, and um, the old maxim is, you know, if you're going to write, uh, write what you know. Yes, yeah. I know about Wales, I've lived here all my life. No, about UFOs, so I thought, well, why not, you know, write this book? I've been meaning to, and it just so happened. Um, I mean, you know, they always say everyone's got a book in them, and maybe that's true, but, you know, uh, we haven't always got time, you know, because life takes over. Yeah, yeah. It just so happened, I, a year or so, a couple of years ago, I just sat down and I thought, I'm going to write this. So have there been many UFO sightings in Wales that you can think of? Well, there have been thousands and thousands. Um, I mean... Uh, in, in my book, um, the, the, there's an in, it's an index, and, yeah. and it, there are hundreds of uh, you know, Welsh towns and cities where sightings have been recorded. Um, I mean, there have been I mean, f f famous recent sightings. I mean, a couple of, two, in 2008, there was a, a police helicopter in coming to the UFO uh, over St Athens, which was widely reported at the time. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, in, in, in the... Um, events known as the Welsh Triangle, there were probably hundreds taking place uh, throughout West and South West Wales at, at the time. Um, really, um, but actually, in, in truth, um, in every decade there have been you know, scores of, uh, of sightings being reported. And obviously the thing to remember is not everyone reports a UFO sighting. Right. So the records we often get, we get from... Um, um, in recent years, there have been a lot of freedom of information requests uh, made um, to the British government uh, about UFO sightings. And so what, what we've been getting are the uh, previously uh, classified files held by the MOD police. And um, in recent years, you know, these have, these have been released. And um, it's clear that people have been reporting, you know, had thousands of, uh, of UFO sightings in Wales. Um, Pretty consistently, really, or for the last, well, for certainly the last five or six decades. Okay. What's, what's interesting is that people sometimes don't know what they're seeing and they try to make sense of it. There's a phrase called cognitive dissonance, which is yeah. a big word for today. Mm -hmm. uh, and it means that people try to make sense of what they see. There is an argument that when uh, the Spanish ships landed in South America, the natives did not see them because they made no sense to their means of perceiving. Mm -hmm. And I think that trying to explain the unknown it always deals with our own experience. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's always possible for many people to, uh, to sort of talk about UFOs and whatever in the same sense as they might talk about tarot cards and whatever and religious belief. Mm -hmm. Now, necessarily, they are not at all related at all. I mean, Swansea University next, ter next term, I'm running a course, a 20-week course, on biology in space. If the same laws of physics apply right across the universe, which we think they do, therefore the same laws of the development of life apply. Yes, of and, you know, this is why it's very important that it's not presented as a group of nuts, which is why sensible people and I don't mean that people who are interested in the unknown are nuts, but what I mean is it's easy to be presented in that way. Well, there are many eminent people who have come yes. to the belief that there, you know, um, there is extraterrestrial life. I mean, Carl mm. Young, um, yes. Albert Einstein, yes. uh, many others. Uh, in fact, there's a well-known astrophysicist, um, J. Allen Heinick, um, mm. who um, initially um, was involved in Project Blue Book I mentioned earlier, um, he was a non-believer, but um, 
he studied all the cases, and because there were some that could be explained in conventional terms, he concluded that, that you know, these things that have been reported must come from somewhere else, and they weren't coming from the Earth, that was clear. So where were they coming from? Mm. You know, the issue is, you know, where do they come from, and how do they get here? Perhaps, you know, that, that's a big topic. Yes. Um, but Carl, there's a, a gentleman called Carl Sagan, who was a well-known physicist, um, who initially was a believer in the subject. He became more skeptical later on, but that may be because of uh, professional pressures, because for lots of uh, leading academics, to believe in this subject is professional suicide. Mm. But um, Carl Sagan developed the idea that it's possible that if there are alien civilizations, they would have developed new laws of physics. I mean, if you had a civilization, for instance, that was a million years older than humanity, who knows what, 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 what they would have I mean, who knows what, if, if we survive that long? What we think of how we come in a hundred years in terms of technology. Yes. So, um, you know, this is a, su a subject which, um, you know, it's a vast topic, but um, I think you're right in one sense where we, 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 I mean, it, there are paranormal elements to it, yes, but there are also are. strong scientific oh, elements of course. to it, you know, I think it's, it, you know, but it's still, the way the media's treated the subject over the years, yeah. particularly yes. in Wales, you know, I have to say, the yeah. media reporting of UFO sightings hasn't been very positive. Precisely, I mean, if you look very simply at this fact, when natives in um, Polynesian islands first met on the radio, yeah. they concluded yeah. that it was magic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as you say, the paranormal, is, the, is what exists outside of our normal expectations. And it is just as valid to look at science, belief, interpretation and forms of society that help explain that. We are, we are at a vast edge of a vast ocean of possibilities. In terms of, I mean, the sheer scale of the, I mean, the 300 billion suns in our solar system alone. Um, that's, I mean, so obviously, it's just, I mean, there's a guy called Drake, I think, well, yes. an astronomer who did something called the Drake Equation, calculated how, you know, in, in theory, um, the universe should be teeming with life. Yeah. Possibly it is, you know. Um, and there could be an infinite number of galaxies up there with an infinite number of extraterrestrial life forms combined as well. That is, that is, that, well, that is likely, yeah. statistically, it's likely. Yes. Yeah. And one, one thing that's interesting as well, you know, as, as we're finding out more about the universe and our own solar system, there are more and more, what are they called, habitable planets in our solar system. Um, although for life to develop, it wouldn't have to conform necessarily to the criteria it has on Earth. You know, there are arguments that it wouldn't. Yeah. But even, even using that criteria, in terms of a habitable planet, we're finding more and more planets in our solar system that would be considered habitable, mm. you know, which is, in, which, which is, is, is an interesting development. Yeah, because life forms to adapt to this around this something. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's I mean, at the bottom of the ocean, there are life forms that use chemicals that would kill us. Yeah, of course. Uh, and we might not necessarily need carbon as a basis of life. Silicon is possible. We might not that. necessarily need water. Yeah, they found that. This is the sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And modern quantum physics speculates a whole series of dimensions. It, well, they, they exist apparently, yes. at least 11. At least 11, yes. Um, so we are like early medieval individuals trying to make sense of are we at the centre of the universe or not? You know, that, that's the point. And this is why we have to be open. And this is why sometimes this stuff is does take enormous leaps of imagination. Well I think um, the, the thing is if, if, if it was established I mean established there was something in you know, I think there is something in it. But if, if, if let's just say it's proved conclusively um, tomorrow, that sort of, there was extraterrestrial life. I mean, think of the impact that would have on the world. Um, you know, established religions. Yeah. Um, it would shake them to. It would shake them to their foundations. You know. Yeah. Um, Everyone's perception of the world would change. Right? Yeah. It would also the technological aspect, and this is why I think there's been some suppression involved by various governments because if they use a technology which isn't say oil based or something, or whatever, yeah. it changes things again. Because people here might say, well, let's have that technology, let's use it. But their vested interests say, you know, on the earth, let's be honest, they want us to use oil and, so, you know, and, and, and similar things. Uh, so I, th you know, I think there are good reasons why, one, this subject is largely, it's been open to ridicule by the mainstream media, um, government, various government agencies, and also good reasons why it's probably been suppressed. 
Okay. Uh, you know, I think there's strong vested interest at uh, work. There is a theory, isn't it, called the zoo theory, isn't there? Uh -huh. That um, we are at a crucial point where we are either going to make it or not make it. And perhaps, until we prove whether we can, perhaps that is why we have not yet had any significant encounter. If you see what I mean. You know. I'm just going to work with um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry. questions. Absolutely. So, um, local UFO, uh, UFO sightings, uh, this is in regards to, why do you think they come to Earth? Well, well that's a good question. It's a difficult question. I couldn't give a definitive answer. Uh, again, there are a number of theories. Um, I mean, I'm not so sure that they're that interested in Earth or what takes place here. That's my personal view. I think if there is this vastly intelligent uh, civilization, they might view us in the same way that we view ants. Do they see us as hostile, do you think? Uh, is it, um... That's another theory. Another, I mean, one interesting thing about this phenomenon is how it seems to accelerate it with the development of uh, nuclear power and nuclear weapons on the Earth. So one theory is by some people that these extraterrestrial civilizations are, are concerned, you know, that we develop these weapons mm. and uh, may use them not necessarily not, not just in a harmful way against ourselves, yeah. but, but, but um, outside the earth as well. That, that, that's one, th that's another theory. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's difficult, I mean, there may be an, you know, a number of maybe reasons. Maybe they're, they're not technologically advanced as us, so maybe they want to have our technology or they want to... I wouldn't have thought so. No, I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, obviously to reach you, they would probably need to be quite technologically advanced. Yeah. Uh, but if they're at such a level where they can, I mean, obviously, the, one issue uh, at play here, it has to be addressed, so the dis you know, distances, how do you, you know, negotiate the vast distances in the galaxy you know, to reach the Earth, say. Oh, physics answers this, you know, with wormholes. Um, and other theories, you know, with, which explain how vast distances can be negotiated in almost no time at all. Mm. Um, but, um, you know, to explain you know, to the reasons what, what, why they, you know, it is, we can only guess at other the reasons, I think. Okay. Um, yes, I think it, that. Yeah, it, it's interesting what you say because, I mean, assume there are still parts of this world where we're discovering tribes that, yeah. that haven't been discovered before. Yeah. Now, suppose after overcoming that technological uh, difficulty of travelling, suppose somebody visited here a thousand years ago and they thought, well, we've been there. Unaware of what's happened in the last thousand years, you know, this, we have to try and put our own perspectives, our limited perspectives, into trying to get some sort of grasp on why do people go anywhere? And that that that's that's the interesting. I mean, I don't hold the theory. I mean, um, held by some ufology that the you know it's experiments on human beings and interbreeding or any of that. I don't go down that road personally. Okay. I mean, as a result of the problem called the X-Files in the 1990s, that idea became quite popular. I think probably the X-Files did an almost damage the subject of ufology. And you wonder sometimes where this deliberate, you know, where powerful interests will produce something cultural which will damage a topic, whether they do it, I mean, they, they, mm. they didn't do it deliberately, I don't know, but you do wonder. Because the X-Files, you know, when I, I say I'm interested in it'll always come up, you know. Um, carry on. Okay, so um, where have UFOs been mostly sighted in Wales? Well, statistically, I mean, they have been sighted. I mean, throughout Wales, just in terms of recorded, I mean, there's certainly Denbyshire in North Wales. Yes. There have been um, you know, abductions there, a number of sightings, a uh, number of very interesting encounters. Obviously, you have to look at West Wales, Pembroke, you know, the West Triangle. Um, um, and, and things were occurring there actually before the, what was the Welsh Triangle in the 1970s. In, in fact, two, um, two uh, Air Force pilots disappeared there uh, in okay. 1970, I think. Um, the, the, the disappearance has never been accounted for. This has been documented. So you have to look at that part of it. Um, and it just so I mean, according to my research anyway, um, I think Swansea, uh, uh, you know, the, the area around Swansea, Gower, um, there have been quite a few sightings recorded. Um, no, um, no reports of abductions or encounters with humanoids. Um, just aerial sightings. You mentioned alien abductions. Um, what's your theory about that? Did you, why would alien 
be able to abduct us. That, I mean, again, that's, I mean, they tend to, I mean, there's a long history uh, in the subject of abductions yeah. um, throughout the world. And these things, the interesting thing about these things is they're reported throughout the world. In fact, I mean, there was a, arguably the first um, alien abduction, uh, if we're going to use that term, to occur in, in Wales, was recorded uh, not far from here in Neath in 1856. Um, a gentleman, a young gentleman called, I think, Rhys Ronald, it's, it's in my book, um, he encountered this strange spherical shaped object and um, the, he, he seems to remember little creatures communicating in some way and he disappeared for a week, this, this was recorded and uh, he had no memory of what happened in, in, during that week but um, he just appeared a week later and uh, his family wondered where he'd been. Interestingly, he had strange marks on his body and uh, um, ha hair loss and uh, um, appeared as if he'd been, well, very sunburnt. Okay. Um, and um, I only throw that in as an example of uh, recorded um, alien, abduction, alien abduction in Wales. Um, but these have, you know, these have been occurring throughout the world and um, again they seem to conform to a certain pattern what tends to, you know people obviously there's time you know people lose time uh, they remember being um, these straight off like the, the descriptions of, of the beings they encounter are the same uh, small large heads uh, who seem to want to uh, conduct basic ex not experiments on them but take body samples and, and uh, conduct other uh, not usually paint, but it's as if they're laboratory creatures, which is interesting. Obviously, this means that most of these abductions are not nice experiences for people. Okay. They can be quite traumatic. I mean, again, the reasons why would be, you know, it's difficult to, to guess. Um, they seem curious. No, you know, bear in mind, you shouldn't accept every claim of alien abduction that's made. Um, but... Um, if you look at the history of the subject, um, they seem curious about people. Often they want to give people a message. Okay. Um, I mean, people who've been abducted, when they've been uh, gone, undergone hypnosis later, they've um, given descriptions of seeing a future Earth devastated, yeah. um, ravaged by war. Uh, you know, that's, that's quite common. Um, and it's, the interesting thing about the subject is it's often only later, after they've undergone hypnosis, that the experience, um, they remember the experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, they know that. Um, it's vivid as well. It's a vivid experience. They remember, yeah. And the three or four cases that have been recorded in Wales, it tends to be that people have been travelling, and um, so, all they remember, you know, suddenly they 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 arrive somewhere, and they've they've lost a period of time and can't account for it. Okay. And um, so, the, so the reasons. Um, you know, why it, any aliens you know, would abduct people, um, one, one reason seems to be um, curiosity. Okay, okay. It's interesting because yeah. if you think about it, how modern naturalists uh, go and grab animals, and yeah. there's certain parallels there, isn't there? That, that is true, yeah, that is true. Which isn't that encouraging if you, if you like to believe extraterrestrials, these angelic, benign beings who are going to come and save us, you know. Um, if they just see us as laboratory animals, maybe they do. Is it possible that, though, that some alien abductions are psychological? Is it possible that, that yes, some yes. people, or victims of alien abduction, have had a psychological episode yes. where they think they've been abducted, but they haven't, they've been dreaming Absolutely. Anymore. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Well, again, ideas can be planted. Yeah. People, yeah. You know, uh, uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah that's oh. right. Okay, that's well, if you go back to literature, I mean, there's, there was a series of um, books written by a guy called H.P. Lovecraft in the 20s. Yeah where he speculated on the origins of humanity. Mm -hmm. And he, I mean, the ideas are quite fanciful. Mm -hmm. But there is this constant thing about why are we of interest? Mm -hmm. How did we get here? Mm -hmm. And who are the aliens? I mean, in a sense, really, if life on this planet was started by life by the effect of an asteroid, we are all aliens. Of course, um, of course. But of course, all these ideas would From inform... Mars, arguably, they, 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 they yes. think they, that's what they wanted to The do. ideas inform us. Well, the cultural ideas that we read in science fiction will also inform people who have psychological breakdowns. Yeah. 
records. I mean, and that's the, why I, I've always tried to sort of it is these anomalous events that we cannot explain that are the most interesting because we must always look for other explanations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is why people, say, likely have written this book mm -hmm. to try and put a serious yeah. view of it. I mean, I don't tend to write about sensationalist cases, you know, I tend to write about things that can have documented and been recorded. I mean, I don't believe every, you know, person claims to be, you know, you have, you, you have to have a degree of scepticism with, with this subject, you know. Mm -hmm. But my view is, if just one abduction is true, that's good enough for me. If one you were full sighting yeah. is true, it's good enough. If one recorded on radar, I mean, that's, it only takes, you know, I mean, there are many genuine cases, but I'm quite willing to say, um, you know, many claims of alien abduction uh, may well be false. Yes. Intentionally yeah. or unintentionally. That, 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 you know, it, does, it doesn't alter the reality of the subject. No, of course, it's also good to have a long mind, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You've got As I said constantly yeah. before, there were fairy abductions in previous well, that, ages. And is that just another cultural way of experiencing what had happened? Yeah. Well, there is what, what's called this, the, the psychosocial theory yes. of UFOs. I mean, yes. It's interesting that people used to encounter, you know, elves and goblins yes. and uh, little people. And... Um, would report similar experiences of sometimes course. to people who've been abducted by, by aliens. Yes. And, and one theory is that there's some phenomena on Earth which manifests itself uh, according to the culture and technology of the time. Mm. That's why in the last 50 or so years, yes. people have tended to see you know, spaceships mm. and encounter extraterrestrials. A hundred years ago, there was, and uh, just before, at the end of the 19th century, there was a massive wave of airship sightings throughout the world. Were there? Yeah, well, in Wales, in, in Port Albert, in Swansea, in Cardiff, there was a rash of airship sightings throughout Europe. And, um, you know, that, that's one, that, that is, there are people called, um, there's a, a well-known French-American ufologist called Jacques Vallée, who, uh, who was featured in the film Close Encounters, played by one actor. That's one of his ideas, that, that, that UFOs are, are, are culturally, uh, a cultural manifestation, really, of some kind of paranormal phenomena. So in his view, they're not real physical objects as such. Mm. Uh, and there's another well-known ufologist mm. called John Keel, who's passed away a few years ago, who came to the conclusion that it was more paranormal than real. That's not necessarily my view, but these no. are people, you know, who research the subject and put forth a strong argument for for that yes. being the case. Yes. Okay. So, so what's your views on crop circles then? Well crop circles again, I mean they are uh, there are some people uh, who I mean a few years ago, about twenty years ago, there were a couple of guys called Doug and Dave who were paraded on the media claiming, you know, that they they, they made some circles. They did make some circles. Um, I think it was demonstrated at the time though that they couldn't have made all the circles that were springing up all over the UK in the late nineteen eighties and early nineties. Um, but there are, you know, there are frauds at work here. There are also crop circle makers who are open about it. Uh, and I think there's a group based in the West Country, who uh, uh, crop circle group who make crop, you know, very elaborate crop circles. Um, but again, the thing is, um, the number. I mean, crop circles isn't just a phenom phenomena uh, that takes place uh, in Britain. It, it's a phenomenon that occurs across the world, and actually, it's a phenomenon that's been occur occurring for centuries. So I think you have to, you know, what, uh, and, and there is a link between some crop circle phenomena apparently and UFO sightings. Um, you know, there's research to say there is. So again, I think um, with crop circles, there is perhaps something at work there we don't understand. Um, you know, there, 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 there's some fraud. Um, That's right. But, the, the, you know, it, it doesn't account for, for all, all the crop circles that, that are found, I think. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting, interesting topic. Uh, and they may be linked to UFOs that they may not. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the crop circle is frequently a symbol. Uh, and it's interesting how we communicate via symbols. And Carl Jung um, mm -hmm. believed very much that every human in the world was linked with something called the collective unconscious. That's right. And within that were ways we communicated with one another and we shared common symbols. Yeah. Now, that as you mentioned, you know, he called them visionary rumours. Yes. UFOs were visionary rumours. Although and he believed in the reality. The, and he believed in the, the reality. reality as well. That's but, right, but, yes. you know, but that's right. what you're saying is right. About yeah. And I think that's why we have to continually refine what, we're, what we think and do. We can't be fixed. No. And uh, this is why your book is so useful in explaining all these theories. So do you think that the belief in uh, UFO and aliens is growing now? 
I think it, 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 it comes and goes. I yeah. Think, um, I mean, let's say uh, at the moment, I'm not sure if it's belief seems to be on the way in some way. For whatever, I think cultural reasons, lots of reasons really. Um, but it'll only take some amazing, significant event, you know, suddenly it'll be flavour of the month again. Yeah. I mean, like I say, in the 1970s when I was young, at that period, it was, everyone was interested in the topic, you know, and there were lots of books being produced on the topic, and it was reflected in the media and, and in culture, with, with I mean, Close Encounters was, was made uh, on the back of the interest in, in, in the subject. What was interesting about Close Encounters was, after it, obviously people began to report seeing UFOs everywhere. Maybe yeah. it was influenced by the film, or maybe they were just looking. Yeah. You don't yeah. know. I mean, th th these things are all interlinked, you know. At the moment, I think, it, I mean, you know, new technology it, it has such an inter interesting role because, of course, um, in one sense now, people are, have got, I mean, for instance, uh, cameras and video recorders and all sorts of things are more readily available, so they can, you know, things can be more readily recorded. Also, um, they can be more readily forged. Um, so, you know, I mean, in my book, as well as commenting about UFO activity in Wales, um, I also look at some famous cases. And what I find is some of the most interesting cases tended to occur before the advent of all this new technology, you know, the internet, mobile phones, digital cameras, because, you know, you had photographic evidence there which can't, still can't be refuted, radar evidence, other physical evidence, and um, so at the moment, I think there are lots of, I mean, you can have to go on the internet, and there are, you know, lots and lots of UFO sightings being, being reported, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I'm sure many of those are genuine. Um, but in terms of, say, take, take modern day contemporary Britain, it's probably, a sub, it's probably returned to the fringes, I think, if yeah. I'm being honest. Um, you know, I've never written a book on the subject, and the reaction I get from people. Uh, you know, tells me that, you know, they're polite. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're polite. That's but yeah. some, you know, some, yeah, they're polite. <laughs> but you're embarrassed about it. Okay. They, be, yeah. I'm sure behind my back they say all kinds of things about me. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's all the questions I have uh, for tonight's show. But yeah. well, thanks very much for uh, coming on. Then, uh, Thank you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, been, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and thanks for introducing us to your new book, uh, UFO Wales. Yeah. Um, it's available in uh, most bookshops, is that uh, correct? It's available well, locally, it's available in water stores. Water stores? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. it's available through library. Uh, it's available uh, via Amazon, uh, on Kindle, mm -hmm. and um, it's also available as an e-book on the internet. Lovely. And uh, I'm hoping in time it will become more widely available. Also, I'm hoping that uh, there will be an updated, updated edition uh, in a year or two, um, okay. in a year or two, um, fantastic. Okay, okay. Uh, well, thank you both for coming on the show. Thank, thank you for being in Shrewsbury as well. It's been a pleasure. And, um, so, don't forget to tune in for next Thursday's uh, show at uh, 7 o'clock, usual time, and uh, we will be t discussing more uh, unusual topics uh, for next week. Okay, and thanks very much for tuning in.